This PDST post-primary level resource aims to support teachers in using digital technologies when engaging in a blended learning approach to teaching, learning and assessment. We suggest that you engage with this resource in a sequential fashion, moving from left to right along the menu at the top. On the home screen, you will be presented with information regarding blended learning, which of course introduces blended learning and provides a definition in this regard. For the purposes of this resource, we'll be aligning our beliefs with that of Garrison and Kanuka, who defined this approach to teaching and learning as the thoughtful integration of classroom face-to-face -face learning experiences with online learning experiences. By scrolling down through the page, you will then come across the flipped classroom model and enriched virtual model, as we will be focusing in on these two models in particular, given the current Irish context and the facility by which both of these models allow for learning to take place both within the classroom environment and indeed at home. Moving down further along the homepage, you'll be presented with some of the key benefits regarding blended learning. And as you'll see, many of these benefits are aligned with key literature in this area. PDST supports in this area are also provided on the homepage, namely the PDST distance learning page, webwise.ie, skullnet.ie and teachercpd.ie. By tapping on each image, you'll be provided with direct access to each website. If you would like to find out more about any of the references cited in this resource, you can simply click on our reference list, which brings you to our complete reference list, which is subdivided by section for ease of locating the references which you would like to read up more about. The next section is, of course, our model section. So by tapping on models, we're brought to the model homepage. And here we're provided with an overview of the constituent ingredients of blended learning, namely school based activities such as traditional instruction and technology rich environment and online activities such as informal online learning and full time learning, both of which constitute blended learning. Within blended learning, then, we're provided with a number of models which we can use, namely the rotation model and the four sub models, station rotation, lab rotation, flipped classroom and individual rotation models, flex model, a la carte model and the enriched virtual model. As previously mentioned, this particular resource focuses in on the flipped classroom model and the enriched virtual model, given their facilities to support and facilitate learning within the classroom environment and at home, and also in considering the current context within Ireland. You can find out more about each of these particular models by selecting the flipped classroom model at the bottom of the screen or the enriched virtual model, or by simply accessing these areas using the drop down menu. By clicking into the flipped classroom model, you're presented with some key information regarding what this model essentially entails. And you can see here from Bloom's taxonomy on screen that in the more traditional teaching sense, we introduce concepts within the classroom and then at home, learners are provided with opportunities to explore that concept more in depth. Whereas engaging in a flipped classroom model approach to blended learning, teachers can introduce concepts outside the classroom situation, which allows for more time within the classroom situation for teachers to delve more deeply into the concept. As we scroll down through the page, we're presented with a very short explainer video regarding the key tenets of the flipped classroom. We're provided with some examples as to what the flipped classroom can look like in Irish post-primary schools. And we're also provided with some examples in terms of at home, what learners could do, and at school, what learners could do when engaged in this model. You'll note that many of the key features and aspects are underlined here, and these are essentially online tools such as websites, which can be accessed by clicking on the underlined word. The same format is again engaged in the enriched virtual model subsection. In this section, we're presented with information regarding the enriched virtual model. And very similarly to the flipped classroom model, there are two key components here, an in-school component, which constitutes face-to-face -face instruction or supplementation, and an at-home component, which again involves online instruction and engagement with digital content. 
The key difference between the flipped classroom model and the enriched virtual model is that in the enriched virtual model, learners do not need to attend the school daily necessarily. Also, in the enriched virtual model, a topic could be introduced within the classroom setting or at home and built upon in each area. By scrolling down, again, you're presented with a very short explainer video looking at the key tenets of the enriched virtual model. And again, we look at some activities that learner could engage with at home in terms of using the enriched virtual model and at school. Scrolling further on down the page, then we're introduced to VLEs or virtual learning environments, otherwise known as digital platforms. And this is a topic which is delved further into in detail in the next section accessible here at the top menu. In this digital platform section, you're presented with a number of options in terms of the platforms that post-primary schools typically are using within the Irish education system. By clicking on the image, this will link you to an area on our distance learning webpage where you can find out more about each of the platforms listed before you. Scrolling down then, we're presented with two case studies. In our platform section, our planning section and our practice sections, you'll note that there are two case studies in each section and subsection to really engage teachers and to provide a focus for teachers in terms of how digital technologies can be embedded effectively when using a blended learning approach. Moving down then, you see that there are some key considerations listed when choosing your platform. And again, these will link to our distance learning webpage if you want to find out more information about the considerations listed here. We've also looked at synchronous learning and asynchronous learning within the post-primary context. Here, you can link to our online conferencing section to find out more about the four most used tools within the post-primary context for this purpose. And of course, you can find out more about the flipped classroom model and the enriched virtual model, which will link you back to the previous section. Moving on to the next section then, which is our planning section. Simply by tapping on planning, it will bring us to the planning homepage. Here, you'll be presented with some key considerations in terms of planning for blended learning. Namely, that supports which are implemented either in the classroom context or at home should complement but not replicate each other. There should be a whole school collaborative approach. Teacher efficacy can be improved through CPD. For example, engaging in this resource uh, is one key area that teachers can go to to achieve this aim. We've linked to our DL planning website some good practice videos to provide you with examples of how digital technologies can be effectively embedded. And simply by clicking on your planning template for blended learning, you can access a downloadable PDF, which you can then just download and save to your own desktop for further use. Again, we have our two case studies exploring how two post-primary schools went about planning for blended learning. We have planning considerations for teachers, and also importantly for school leaders. Here, you'll find pertinent key questions to ask with some additional information, and you'll also find access to resources which are useful within both contexts. Moving down then, you'll access the constructivist alignment section. Here, a short video will play outlining why engaging in constructivism within our lessons is very important in preparing our students for working effectively within society in the future. Moving further on down then, you can explore a three-step planning process. Again, we've linked to Bloom's taxonomy here in exploring proprietary activities, focal activities, and follow-on activities. And importantly, the last section here explores evaluation and looks at how schools can reflect on their own process in terms of embedding blended learning to see how they are getting on. Again, you can link to sample teacher self-reflection sheets and sample school self-reflection sheets here by simply tapping on the button and accessing downloadable PDFs, which can be used for evaluative purposes. Importantly, in the planning section, we've included a subsection exploring copyright. It's very important that teachers would consider copyright implications at this point in the process. The top Information just looks at copyright here in general terms. 
We then look at the various different attributions which teachers would commonly come across online when accessing resources or which can be used if they want to share their own supports online. And then we've looked at some of the more commonly used copyright free sources of imagery. Tapping on any of these tiles will let you have access to the websites directly. The same with our sources of icons. And of course, the same with sourcing music. So the various websites listed here can be accessed simply by tapping on each tile. Once we have our planning considerations solidified within a whole school context, we're then ready to move on to the practice. By tapping on the practice, you'll be presented with Graeme et al's blended teaching matrix. This is essentially a matrix which identifies four categories of learning interactions, all of which are required for blended learning. You can see there are learner-human interactions, learner-content interactions, face-to-face -face interactions, and non-digital content interaction. We explore the matrix a little further in terms of what we can expect to see happening in each quadrant, and also in terms of the teaching skills which will be needed. At the end of this page, you'll be provided with a number of subsections to explore to see how blended learning can be practically embedded into teaching, learning and assessment. So you can simply click on any of these buttons at the bottom to bring you into that particular subsection, or you can access them from the drop down menu at the top. Let's look at creating video as an example. Each of the subsections will follow the same general format in that you'll be introduced to the topic at the top. You'll be provided with two case studies where you can see how schools are engaging in this type of learning and what that may look like. And again, any particular digital tools of note will be hyperlinked for ease of access for you. You'll also be presented with additional information. In this case, we look at an introductory approach to using video for blended learning purposes, an intermediate approach and an advanced approach in this regard. As you can see, we've also linked to our online tutorials which are housed in our PDST Digital Technologies YouTube channel so that you can upskill yourself in each of these areas depending on what level you feel is appropriate for you. Important to note at this point that this resource has been created for teachers who are just starting out on their digital journey or for teachers who are along the way. Each section will also contain additional information such as practical considerations for using instructional videos in this case and will link to key PDST supports. So in the case of video, we've linked to sources of pre-made video content on our distance learning webpage. And we've also linked to the many, many online video tutorials that we've housed there also.